again, I'm Teresa Tamio, radio talk show host, author, and motivational speaker. And welcome once again to Catholic Courses and this elective on managing the media wisely. In this session, we're going to be talking about taking a two-pronged approach in terms of media influence in our lives. How can we improve the climate at home? And how can we improve the media climate in the culture? The bottom line is it all starts with really good catechesis. And we know that the Catholic Church teaches us that the parents are the primary catechists. And so it's very important for all of us, especially if we have children or grandchildren or are around children a lot, to understand that it's our responsibility in the home to take control of these media outlets. But the interesting thing is the church tells us in addition to the catechesis, of course, that begins with the family and the home, that we have a responsibility to the world. Of course, the church exists primarily for evangelization, and we are all called by virtue of our baptism to evangelize. So therefore, all of us are responsible for what we do with the media, and we'll have to answer to the Lord at some point as to how we use the media. And hopefully, God willing, we'll be using it wisely and learn more as we go along. So we're going to take a look at the two-pronged approach. Of course, taking care of our family, in the home with the media, taking control of those media outlets, and we'll have some very easy suggestions for you. And then secondly, simple ways, simple ways that you can make a difference out there in the culture. In our last segment, we talked about the media influence in our world and in our lives. And I had a great deal of statistics in that segment. Let me just give you a few of those to refresh your memory in terms of really taking to heart that the media have a great impact on all of us. Not always negatively, of course, because as we've been learning, the media can do a lot of good, but we also know that they can promote, unfortunately, a lot of evil and desensitize us, even if we're strong Catholics, to the teachings of the church and maybe influence us in a bad way. Let's talk, first of all, about the amount of media that we all consume. Well, the Kaiser Family Foundation, for example, says children, and they're talking about grade school and high school young people, consume on average every single week 53 hours of media. 53 hours of media. That includes cell phone usage, texting, time on Facebook, some time, of course, working on homework, possibly, but overall taking in TV and probably in terms of the content out there, whether it's sexual content or violent content, certainly it's not a positive influence in terms of uh, the amount of media they're taking in 53 hours a week. And adults, well, we're not much better. Adults consume about 40 to 44 hours a week. And we've been talking a lot in this elective course on managing the media wisely about how from the minute we get up in the morning, whether we're just turning on that clock radio next to our bed or turning that radio off as the alarm goes off, or walking into the bathroom to get ready for work or, or for the day, and we turn the radio on to hear the headlines, and we go downstairs and the TV is already playing, and someone's on the laptop, and the cell phone's ringing, and the house phone's ringing, and then we get in the car and the whole cycle begins over and over again. This is pretty much the scene in most of our lives because we are a media-saturated culture. And in all things, as Catholics, we need to go back to the basics, back to the church. The church is always going to give us the truth about how we are to live out all things in our life, and the media is no different. There is a whole history of writings from the church, which are amazing, and we're going to talk about more of them in this session, that help us to take control of the media. As I mentioned earlier, some of my favorite statements on the media come from our wonderful popes, the Vicars of Christ, who have taught us so much. And John Paul II was considered the media pope. He just understood the media. He was uh, very charismatic. He had that type of an outgoing personality that just spoke to you when he was on television or, or being interviewed. He had a gift. And he had a beautiful World Communications Day statement, which came out in 2004, just about a year before he died. It's one of my favorites, and it's called The Media and the family, a risk and a richness. So right away we see the church taking this two-pronged approach, that it's a risk because there are some dangers out there that we have to be aware of as Catholics, especially where the family is concerned, but there's also a great deal of richness because the media enable us to do a number of things. They enable us to evangelize. They enable us to learn more about education and culture and learn more about our faith. So again, we have this two-pronged approach. We have a risk. We have a richness, and then we go back to this two-pronged approach of this is why we need to take care of it in the home and out in the culture. Let me give you a, a quick analogy of this two-pronged approach. In the United States over the last 20 to 30 years, there's a great deal of education 
on the negative influence of smoking and the effect it has on our bodies, lung cancer, all kinds of other problems. And most people now think that smoking is um, a negative thing. Most people really try to quit smoking if they've already started, and there are all kinds of campaigns for us to not smoke at all. A lot of people, of course, want their homes to be, for good reasons, smoke-free. And so they don't allow people to smoke in their homes. And now we have so many restaurants across the country that don't allow smoking at all, and most places are smoke-free. So we have it out in the culture where people have stood up against it, but we also have it in the home where people say, I don't want to smoke in my home because I know it's bad for me, and we now know that secondhand smoke is bad for the children. So there's a two-pronged approach. We take care of our own health and our own family and our immediate circles and our immediate environment, and then we try to have an influence, a positive influence, on society, and that's what we're talking about with the media. We approach it in the home, and then we approach it out there in the culture because we're all called as Catholics to evangelize and to make a difference. Now let's look at what John Paul II had to say in this beautiful World Communications Day statement, Media and the Family, a Risk and a Richness. He said, people grow or diminish in moral stature by the words which they speak and the message they choose to hear. Consequently, wisdom and discernment in the use of the media are particularly called for on the part of communications professionals, parents, and educators, for their decisions greatly affect children and younger people for whom they are responsible, and who are ultimately the future of society. The family and family life are all too often inadequately portrayed, he says, in the media. Infidelity, sexual activity, outside of marriage, and the absence of a moral and spiritual vision of the marriage covenant are often depicted uncritically. While positive support is at times given to divorce, contraception, abortion, and homosexuality, such portrayals by promoting causes inimical to marriage and to the family are detrimental to the common good of society. So that's why the church is telling us in this document and in many other teachings that it's important to understand what's coming at us 24-7 in the media and this media-saturated culture. I mentioned in our last section in Catholic Courses where we talked about the overall influence of the media that it's very important for us to realize that the church has been really on the forefront of this whole issue. Even years before we've seen the research or we've seen any of the documentation that we have now regarding the media, the church has been speaking about this, not just with the World Communications Day statements, but all the way back to years ago in Vatican II, where they came up with a brilliant document called Inter Marifica, the Decree on Media and Social Communications. 